Welcome to Stuck in Vermont, brought to you by Seven Days and sponsored by Hotel Vermont and New England Federal Credit Union. My name's Ava Solberger. We are here at the McCarthy Art Center on St. Michael's College campus here in Colchester, Vermont. I'm so fond of pleasure that I cannot be a nun. <laughs> Tonight we are going to see a performance of Mill Girls which is a play about women in the 19th century who worked in the mills, like the mills we have in Winooski or Lowell, Massachusetts. So I wanted to try to take their words and use them to the largest extent possible. So it, it is mostly taken from what people said about their experiences themselves or things that were reported in the media or in legislative testimony. And my character actually wrote a memoir about her experiences. Does this look like equal rights and privileges to all? It's completely what these women thought, how they felt, how their families felt about why they were here, what they were doing. For the first time, young women came forth from their homes. And it was also really exciting for my students because I felt like they could connect to it emotionally in a deeper way because it actually happened to somebody. It kind of like brought a lot of emotions <laughs> yes, to that, so I kind of connected to it through that. And it seemed like a really cool and original musical that I want to be involved with. We've got all kinds of people out front. <laughs> Another full house? Yeah. Are the shows always this full? No. no I mean, not usually. usually. <laughs> this show has yeah. been. There's a lot of people in the area that had like family members that worked in the mills. So I think that they really connect with it because it's like the story they've heard from like their grandparents. That's why I'm here. Because the girls in the mill. Well, all our neighborhood work there. Well, I'm here. One of the main reasons is because my grandma's father worked in the mill. Tying knots on blankets. Same job over and over. With one hand. One hand, you tie a knot, you showed us how to do it. Never took a day off. Never. 47 years. Stories keep popping out of the woodwork um, about, about Winooski mill workers. That history is very much alive in people's memories. Far from the factory's deafening sound, from all its toil and strife, I wish my years might run their rounds in sweet retired life. Well, as a history major, I think this is a really cool thing to be a part of. Because it's all about women, um, and there isn't a lot of women in history. And I'm also just a huge feminist, and so doing a show about like workers' rights and feminism, we're still fighting for equal pay, we're still fighting for gender rights, we're still fighting against racial oppression. A cheerful spirit is there. Sing me the song of the factory girl who will never be a slave. It's really a wonderful project on campus because so many classes on campus look at the 19th century or they look at labor history or they look at ethics. They're young girls but they're also like powerful women which I think is really inspirational and we're all here at St. Mike's getting our education which is part of the reason why they were at the mills. They have come to work with their hands but they could not stop the working of their minds. I was looking around for some kind of uh, story to tell and I've always really been intrigued by the mills. And my colleague, Susan Ouellette, she said, oh, you should look at the Lowell Mill Girls, is what she said, not just mills, but mill girls. Well, it's women's history, and it, that's one of my major areas of teaching. And it's also social history, the history of ordinary people, which is really important to me as well. Hundreds of New England girls travel to the cotton factories of Lowell. I sort of learned this whole kind of hidden history lesson about these young women who were sort of drawn off their farms by these industrialists. And if any girl is looking for employment, I advise them to come to Lowell. You know, they worked very long days, and then at night they would go out to lectures, or they would take classes, or they would teach each other things. Or How very preposterous! These things are about their station! An entrance to the world that, that women wouldn't have had in this time period. My name is Captain Kidd. As I sailed, as I sailed, my name is Captain Kidd. As I sailed. You know, what had been kind of a, a friendly job and an easy pace became, you know, kind of a sweatshop rat race kind of thing where women were running from one machine to another, slipping on the oily floors, and still working 13 and a half hours a day. Last Thursday, one girl fell down and broke her neck, which caused instant death. But we say the remedy is not with us. Thus, we consider a 
People's Legislature. Duty bound to protect the weak and defenseless against the combined strength of a capital and organized power. So it was this really wonderful moment um, long before women had the right to vote where they were forming labor organizations. It really is the beginning of the labor movement in this country. They had hoped there could be better working conditions. That together they struck a fair deal with the boss. The music kind of gives more emotion to it. Like We have the song called Hard Times, which isn't an original song. It's a very well-known song. Many days you have lingered around my cabin door. Breathe. Oh! Right, big O. Okay, here oh. we go. Many days you have lingered around my cabin door. Oh, hard times come again no more. Tis a song, the sigh of the A lot of different songs from a number of different sources. I wrote all of the sort of connecting pieces, including some instrumental music. It's a fascinating time and there was so much happening musically that it's still around today. We work in a little Chopin as well, who was uh, right around the same time. And then there's a song by my dad called Hope is the Thing with Feathers with, with uh, lyrics by 19th century rock star Emily Dickinson. a spousal band because Peter's husband, uh, Stan, is playing cello. So. And your wife is also involved. Amber De Laurentiis is playing accordion and snare drum and singing. She has to help me tie my apron every <laughs> night. This is why it was hard dressing this way. Yeah. Probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 students who are working on the show. So um, I was taking a class this semester that actually helped build the set and I designed the properties. All of these aprons were made by us. Um, you can see some of our like patchwork. I had to fix a button. Like, the men's jackets are all completely handmade. Now I'm a priest. A position of authority is represented by a hat and a coat. Now I'm a mill boss. Back in the, uh, the day, if you could afford more clothes, you were obviously richer and therefore better, so... You know how it is. <laughs> now isn't it a pity such a pretty girl as I should be sent to a factory to pine away and die. Oh, I cannot be a slave. I will not be a slave. For I'm so fond of liberty that I cannot be a slave. It's not that much of a stretch, really, because they're, they're all, for the most part, playing young people who are around their age, who are in a transition in their lives, and who have hopes and dreams and challenges in terms of where they'd like to get. Finding their identity in the world around them is something that we all have to do like when we're this age. I've made amazing friendship um, throughout this you know, experience. We love you too, Fabiola! <laughs> the young girls, they love to go shopping, they like to flirt with boys, but then they also love to read Shakespeare while they're working the mills, as one of the lines says, it's a means, not an end. So, like, in college, like, we have to figure out what we want to do, like, in the future. Now I rage against slavery and struggle for justice. It's the gift I've been left by the factory girl. Learning how people got the opportunities they did and how changes were made and looking at the past and then looking at now and seeing what's different but also seeing what's similar. I did not know that they were some of the first union organizers. I didn't either. I thought that was really interesting to learn. It just shows you women get, get the jobs done. <laughs> May we weave a web of freedom that is wide and You have one more weekend to see this show, and we will get stuck in Vermont for you again real soon. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and sign up for our weekly email. I have to call out that there's a mill girl using a strange device behind you. <laughs> She's a witch! What is this? Burn her! Witchcraft! And people are like, are you the trapped in Vermont? Like, yes! Yes, you are it, right? Oh my god. I, I like your videos. Thank you. They're really I'm funny. I'm stuck in Vermont lately. Oh, <laughs> oh, so so I hear like all these different like, <laughs> words. <laughs>